Let's head back to Cupertino, California, where Yahoo Finance tech editor Dan Howley is standing by. So, Dan, after languishing for much of the day, Apple stock actually kind of making a move here at the end of the day, ending up more than 1% as investors taking a second look at all of this following the big event out there. So we've talked a little bit about the phone and the camera that seems to be we know that's the big product but are we being distracted from what's really important for apple out of this meeting i, I don't think so i think you know one of the uh, important things uh, outside of the iphone though is the new apple tv announcement that they will charge 4.99 a month uh, and that it will be available later this year uh, Obviously, $4.99 a month is a steal compared to something like Netflix. It's much cheaper uh, than you would expect uh, Apple to have gone. We were thinking maybe uh, perhaps around $10, maybe with Disney's announcement that they're going to be $6.99, maybe they would hit around there. But the fact that they're $4.99 is absolutely incredible. And you could see from Netflix stock uh, dropping as a result, uh, and Disney as, a, uh, as well following that announcement, there are big companies that now are scared of Apple in this space. But you have to also take into account the fact that that $4.99 a month isn't going to get you nearly the catalog that something like Netflix or Disney Plus has. And I think that's really the big differentiation between them. You have to see what Apple is eventually going to offer. Now, they did say that we will find out about more shows as the months go on uh, that will eventually hit Apple TV Plus, but it's not too many so far. So I want to see where that goes. But that really is an important part of the, the uh, uh, narrative here, as well as the fact that Apple Arcade is coming. Uh, that is equally as inexpensive, and that's going to potentially get gamers very interested in Apple's market. Gaming obviously continuing to grow, especially on mobile. That's where most gamers actually are, both in and outside of the U.S. So the fact that they're offering this subscription service rather could be really important for them. Now, Hallie, uh, not lost on, on many people that Apple began the presentation with rolling out Arcade. They then went to Apple TV Plus, so they started with services. That's the whole narrative now with the company. It felt to me, to some extent maybe, um, and maybe this is just me overreading things here, it almost felt like they buried some of the announcements, especially those related to iPhone. Does it seem to you that Apple as a company is less excited about new iPhones in the same way that I think as consumers we can be a little bit ambivalent about having more cameras on the back because it's still kind of just an iPhone. I, I don't think so. I think they were, uh, you know, they wanted to save kind of their best offering for last. That's why they they kind of did it the way they did. They had already announced uh, Apple TV Plus. It was just about the the timing and the price, which is very big. Don't get me wrong. Same thing for uh, Apple Arcade. I think really they are excited about the new iPhones. And you know, I just got to spend some time playing with them and the new cameras. And truly, it is a very different experience than using the current cameras on the iPhone. They're completely different. And when you see the quality of some of the videos, for instance that you're able to capture with them, it really does look like you're taking them with a professional grade camera. So it kind of blew me away in that respect. The, the fact that you're able to do the ultra wide zoom and then the telephoto uh, zoom is equally impressive. I think a lot of people are going to get a lot out of these cameras. And to be honest, you know, I was kind of coming into this thinking, well, okay, new cameras, that's not really going to be a reason for a lot of people to upgrade. But after using them, I do think a lot of people will get a lot of use out of them. And they are compelling enough, I think, to get users to upgrade, especially given the fact that we're still waiting for a 5G phone. Now, if you have last year's phone, I don't think it's necessarily worth an upgrade yet. If you have the year before, maybe then you want to get an upgrade. But if you're any time prior to that, I think this phone really does have a good uh, uh, capability to it. That and the pricing for the 11, and then don't forget the 10R coming in at 599, that's incredibly inexpensive for an iPhone. I think they're really kind of trying to spread out the ability for people to purchase these devices now. Dan Howley, you're a, a bit of a gamer, so I want to dive into the arcade offering. Do you think that this is going to uh, be a big service for Apple? Because we also had uh, somebody on from the Zynga C-suite not that long ago, and they aren't partnering with them right now because, you know, they want people to pay for their games or get into the, the freemium model with Zynga. Do they have enough in there that this is going to work? I think 
right now, you know, as far as the games that were shown, they look interesting, but I don't necessarily know if it's going to be a lot to pull people in. Now, that said, you're still going to get uh, a free subscription at first. Uh, that's going to, of course, entice people. I think the fact that they're working with such big game studios, they showed a, a more than 100 of the studios that they're working with, that's really important. Now, if they can pull in some of those big game makers, that really could change the, uh, the game for them, really. I think for developers who want to make money off the premium, uh, the freemium model, rather, where you download the game for free and then you continue to pay, think something like Candy Crush, they're going to avoid uh, Apple Arcade just because Apple's not going to allow that. They basically want you to pay the fee for Apple Arcade monthly and then let that be that. And I think for a lot of gamers, that's really where they want to go. They're tired of being kind of nickel and dimed where you say, I'm going to sign up and I'm going to play, for, uh, play this game. Well, now if I want to play the next 10 levels, I have to pay for it. With Apple, they're just going to say, okay, get as many games as you want and play as much as you want. Just pay the $4.99 a month. I think that really would speak to more gamers than the freemium model. Now, a lot of older gamers who play things like Candy Crush, uh, Words with Friends, things along those lines, or Scramble, they might want to just stick to the let's play uh, as much as we can until we run out of money and then we have to, you know, or, or need to pay up. Uh, they might not necessarily jump onto Apple, but if Apple can get some of the compelling offerings that really suck people in, that really get them addicted, I think that people will sign up for Arcade, and it could be big. Dan Howley, have a great evening out there in Cupertino, California.